The remote town of Exmouth in Western Australia, as you might have heard today, has been plunged into darkness in the middle of the day thanks to that rare total solar eclipse. More than 20,000 people packed into the town. It's 1,200 kilometres north of Perth. And those visitors overwhelmed only 3,000 locals to experience what was a 62-second spectacle. Now, let's bring in our chief stargazer, Brad Tucker from ANU. Good to talk to you again, Brad. Uh, look, uh, the, the, from, from songs to poetry and, uh, and, and, um, and, and novels, a total eclipse of the sun, it's, a, it's an amazing experience. No wonder people travel far and wide to see them. Uh, what did you make of today's activities and was there a serious scientific side to it as well? Yeah, I mean, total eclipse of the sun and, and total eclipse of the heart, as Bonnie Ta yeah. <laughs> Taylor says, right? Yeah. It's because it is emotive. You know, as you get that totality where the sun is completely blocked, you can kind of already tell in the shots, the sky darkens. Um, people reported the temperature plummets for a little bit. Even animals think it's nighttime. They start to adjust their behavior because it feels, you know, not that it's pitch black, but that it's getting that dusky feel. And it's such a surreal experience. I think you can understand why people travel, you know, far to go to these things. It's not that common across the world. It's even rare at any given location. But then at the same time, it's kind of an interesting phenomenon because you're able to see in detail the corona, the outside surface of the sun, uh, the sun's atmosphere. You can see those solar flares. These are all things that are critical to understanding the behavior of the sun, how it actually impacts here on Earth, like creating solar storms like the aurora. But also at the same time, which is cool, is it's exactly the same phenomenon that we use to measure planets around other stars. We find thousands of planets around other stars all by waiting for the planet to move in front of the sun for that light to dip and for us to be able to measure the size and potential atmosphere of that planet. So it's a really cool way of showing this is actually what we do for distant stars to find new worlds. In a way, I suppose the experience would show our vulnerability to, or at least our reliance on the sun for that moment when, when we're in the shadow of the moon, uh, you might think that everything we have on this planet, all the life and all the energy, in the end effectively comes from the sun. Yeah, I think that's you're right. It's a really powerful description of what's happening is that is the life force of our planet and us. Um, it's not just the warmth and the heat and radiation, um, but it's the gravitational pull. It's the entire interaction of the Earth-Moon-Sun system. And it's built on years of science and observation and measurement, sending astronauts to the moon that actually gives us experiments that measure the moon is drifting away and how that affects the tides and even affects eclipses. So it's all of that plus a very visual experience. And I think that's the cool thing is you have the cool science behind it, you have the emotion, and anyone can participate, right? You don't need prior knowledge, you barely need special equipment, just something safe for your eyes, yep. and you too can be witness. For sure. If I was a grey nomad, I would have been there. I would have parked the trailer in Exmouth for the day for sure. Now, you mentioned the moon. Tell us, uh, last time we had John, we were talking about the NASA's moon missions. Tell us what the, the next mission is from Art Artemis, uh, Artemis the, this mission, and, uh, and, and, and uh, this is the, the mission where I think a female astronaut will go around the moon. Is that right? That's right. So Artemis 2 will actually take people to the moon. So Artemis 1, as we talked about, yeah, went around the moon. It was a test of the rocket and the capsule, but no one was on it. So Artemis 2, which is scheduled for early 2025, um, will have three firsts, the three first person of color, the first female, as well as the first non-American. There will be a Canadian on board. And I think this is actually what's quite exciting in particular for us in Australia. In fact, from the NASA administrator and deputy administrator, um, Pam Melroy, who used to live and work with us in Australia, said that in the future they can actually even imagine an Australian as one of these astronauts. We are playing a bigger and bigger role, and the countries being involved in these moon missions are varying. In fact, lots of groups are starting to send experiments and, and cargo even. In fact, a private Japanese company, iSpace, is about to land their first probe, which would be the first successful private probe to land on the moon, uh, that's due on Tuesday. So Incredible. there's so much happening as part of this, and we keep finding ourselves as Australians in the middle of it. So it would be amazing to see that first Australian go uh, eventually probably on the moon uh, by the end of the decade. And I think that's a realistic dream now. Yeah, well, we'll both put our names into the hat for that one. What an incredible experience. Thanks for joining us, Brad. I appreciate it.